This is how I got a remote six-figure job in cybersecurity. I think this video will be helpful for you whether you're just getting started in cybersecurity or if you already have experience. So definitely stick around till the end. I currently work as a security analyst and I'm going on about four years of experience this year. So I am still relatively in my early career. And that is also a reason why I think cybersecurity is one of the best ways to get into tech if, if maybe you don't want to code or if you're looking for just an interesting job in general in tech that doesn't necessarily require you to have a advanced degree. I currently work fully remote and my salary is about $120,000 per year. So obviously I'm being very transparent and I'm not trying to brag about my salary or anything. I just want to make it known that there are people who are just starting out in their careers who are making six figures in cybersecurity, especially for those of you who may be considering cybersecurity as a potential career option. And when I was originally looking for jobs, when I graduated from my bachelor's program, let's face it, salary ranges is one of the most important things to consider when you're looking for a job. But I think one of the biggest things that helped me get my current job as a security analyst is passing my security plus certification. So you guys are probably tired of hearing get a certification and get security plus get the a plus get the gsec there's so many certifications out there and i know in cybersecurity specifically we love our certifications every single job that you go into in cybersecurity is probably going to have some recommended or required certification on the job requirements list you know that could be a pro and a con because because certifications cost money they take a lot of time to study for some of them need years of experience to back you up before you can even get the certification officially even if you pass the exam if you don't have the years of experience a home CISSP that you won't be able to get the official certification even if you pass the exam I actually made a video on the best cybersecurity certifications for beginners to help you get your first job now I recommend the security plus just because i think it's one of the most fundamental and also just one of the most popular certifications out there if you're going to spend months of your time well personally it took me months to study for while i was working full-time in my last job i would really recommend studying for the most popular cybersecurity certifications which tend to be the security plus basically anything by comptia security plus a plus network plus all the pluses in the comptia suite of cybersecurity entry-level certifications which by the way most of them do not require years of experience so you can get them without needing to have even one year of experience in cybersecurity and then GX certifications are also very popular the GSEC is a popular one if you don't want to go for a CompTIA certification for whatever reason all of them have different pricing so I would really look into those and definitely watch that video if you guys want to learn more about the specifics of what your certification goes into for the specific roles that you want to go into but when I was applying for my current job as a road security analyst the security plus was the main thing on my resume outside of my work experience that showed that I had a cybersecurity background. My degree was in IT, so I was not, you know, a cybersecurity major. I did not go through a cybersecurity bootcamp. I only took a few cybersecurity courses through college, and Security Plus was what gave me the foundation of my cybersecurity knowledge. And it didn't hurt that a lot of the stuff that I studied for in my Security Plus certification also ended up being the stuff that I studied for for my interview prep. So I cannot recommend it enough. Definitely try to study for your Security Plus or any other cybersecurity certification that is for beginners. Make sure it is a popular one. So, so when you actually go to apply for jobs, you can find your certification in that list of preferred requirements or preferred qualifications, because sometimes that could just be the cutoff point for what companies are looking for. If they have 100 candidates applying to a job and the job has a preferred qualification of a Security Plus certification, and maybe only 20 of those candidates have that certification, then they're probably going to start by interviewing those top 20 and chances are they're likely going to be the ones that end up getting the job. So I really recommend going for a certification if you don't have any prior cybersecurity background or experience. And even if you do have cybersecurity experience, I still think a certification is very helpful. Like I said, I had about two and a half years of experience when I was applying for this job and it still really helped me that I had my security plus because I was very much still in my early career. So this really just helped me in terms of credentials. So for those of you who are looking to get started in a career in cybersecurity, I'd recommend checking out the Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity. The Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity is one of the world's top cybersecurity programs with an average of 100 plus enrollments in every batch. Simply Learn has built a program in collaboration with MIT, Schwarzman College of Computing, and EC Council. This postgraduate program in cybersecurity is designed to equip you with the skills required to become an expert in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity. It was also chosen as the best cybersecurity program in 2022 by Course Report. And I think one of the most important things to call out here is cybersecurity industry trends.
trends. Based on Cyber Ventures, by 2026, there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs internationally with 700,000 available job roles today and the average annual salary of about $100,000 per year. This is also one of the reasons why I think cybersecurity is such a good career to go into, especially because joining a program like this will be able to help you kickstart your career in just a few months where you can come in as a complete beginner and leave with a completed certification with a real hands-on experience, learning foundational cybersecurity concepts, working on hands-on projects, and have a much higher learning potential than most roles in and outside of tech as an entry-level beginner. The program leverages MIT's academic excellence in cybersecurity and provides a comprehensive understanding of the field with various different courses featuring modules from the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing and EC Council, as well as master classes from MIT faculty. You'll have a chance to work on 25 hands-on projects, as well as have access to modules from EC Council and have access to CEH learning material. The top alumni from Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity include Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, LinkedIn, JP Morgan. At the end of this program, you'll also receive an EC Council learning kit and exam voucher, as well as six months free access to CHI Labs. Fields covered include ethical hacking, risk management, advanced hacking concepts, as well as mobile and web technologies. You can check out their admissions process where you can pay via monthly installments with various payment options with low APR and no hidden fees for as low as $264 a month. So if you guys are interested in checking out the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity, you can use my code Sandra10 for 10% off. You can also learn more about the program itself linked in my description below. The next thing is to make sure that you're focusing on companies with actual remote policy policies as well as companies that you actually know and want to work for. This is definitely something that I made a mistake on when I was in my early career. A really easy way to do this is just to go on Google, look for jobs, and make sure you check off remote slash work from home and they'll show you only jobs that are remote and don't require you to go into an office or even hybrid if that's something that you're looking for but personally I only wanted remote jobs I did not want to go into an office however it's a perk that my company actually does have an office I just haven't been there um, but at one point if I am in the city then I will probably try to visit but I like the idea of not having to be forced to go into an office if I didn't want to and I think that's what a lot of people are looking for just that flexibility of choice on whether or not they want to go into an office because I know many people who work remotely but still work in the same city as that has a company office and they still go into the office once a week or once every few weeks maybe to get free snacks or talk to a co-worker so I think that's actually what people want the flexibility and the freedom to go into an office when they want to and not have to go in on a Tuesday or or four days a week or something like that. I think this also comes down to the type of company that you're applying for so for example if you're working in healthcare or the Department of Defense, some kind of government agency, those probably aren't going to be as remote as a job that is just for a, that may be for a more tech-centric uh, Fortune 500 company or maybe a startup or maybe like a small to medium-sized company. So you really have to focus on the demographic of the company here because if you're applying to a defense contractor, you're probably going to be working in the office, um, especially if you need some kind of secret or top secret clearance for something that you're working on. You probably can't do it from home. A lot of the work that you may be doing is probably going to be very highly classified or secret. I don't know all the terms because I obviously do not have my clearance. But I know there are many facilities and companies who will take your phone from you and you're not allowed to actually use it or see it just in case you take any pictures or send messages or stuff like that during your work day. So, so that is definitely something to keep in mind. You want to apply for companies that actually have remote jobs and the ones where they make sense to not require you to go into an office. So the main places that I applied to jobs were on Google Jobs. I know Monster, Indeed, Dice.com, those all have jobs out there where you can search specifically for remote jobs. But another website that I really recommend is Built In. They have mostly smaller to medium-sized companies but i've seen a lot of bigger companies now fortune 500 companies fortune 50 companies actually listing their job postings on there because there just are more people looking at those job postings um, that are looking for a specific type of role and it also tells you very blatantly this is a remote role and it also tells you things like salary ranges and typically they're not the low-ball version that you probably see on you know typical sites that are just that are just numbers game and that have tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of posts these ones are quality posts so i definitely recommend built in and it was originally made for startups i believe um but there are smaller medium-sized companies on there and now bigger companies are also catching on and putting their job listings on there so definitely recommend that one i think it also really helps if you know about the company that you're applying for because it makes it a whole lot easier when they ask you questions like what do you know about us? Or why do you want to work for our company? What do you know about our products? 
Those are the kinds of questions that obviously you still want to do your homework on before each interview, but if you inherently know what they do, and if you're also lucky enough to have used their products as a customer or as or just as a typical user, um, I think that's also something to call out and something that can kind of get you, I wouldn't say get your foot in the door, but I would say that it kind of helps bring you along because you know more about their products than maybe a typical person would especially if you use the product hands-on so definitely apply to companies that they are interested in and actually know about their products or have used them before um, i think those are just they're really easy targets to get first when you're on the job search because you could be applying to hundreds of job listings out there and i do think that it ends up being a numbers game for the amount of jobs that you end up applying for the next thing is a very very important one and that is to negotiate so i didn't mention this in the beginning of the video but my first job out of college in a cybersecurity rotational program i was working for a fortune 50 company and i just graduated with my bachelor's degree in information science and technology aka IT or ST and my starting salary was $115,000 per year so obviously my salary didn't really change much but I am now able to work remotely compared to my previous job where I was making a very similar salary to me as right now um, but I was living in New York so I was spending more than 60-70% of my income just on rent and living and food just being in the city is very expensive and now I get to work remotely from anywhere and that is something that I personally really appreciate and care for so I wasn't necessarily looking for the highest paying job when I was looking for a job or when I was looking for my next job I was looking for the best remote role that I could find with a company that I wanted to work for. So I actually have a video on how I got my first job in cybersecurity out of college at six figures and I can link that video down in the description if you guys want to check that out. But negotiating is very, very important. You don't necessarily have to share the current salary that you're making. Oftentimes your recruiter is going to ask you what salary expectations that you have. Um, you can give a range if you want. I go into more detail about how I negotiated in that video. So if you guys want to hear the details, then you can check that out. But I really think this is where you have to be the biggest advocate for yourself. You don't want to low wire yourself right from the start, especially because when you start the job and people start talking about their salaries, maybe you find out the guy next to you is making I don't know, like 10, 15K more than you and you're doing double the work that he is or making more contributions to the team or whatever it is, there's so many reasons to negotiate. And if you don't negotiate and you end up realizing that you have a lower salary than a majority of your peers, then that can end up causing resentment for your team or for your role, uh, for the company. And it may end up pushing you to leave your current job and go to the next one for a higher paying salary because once you join a company, it is a little bit harder to increase your salary naturally um, unless you get a promotion, which usually will take a few years at least, or at least one or two years. So I do think it's something important to consider do some market research look online for the average salaries that your company is paying for the specific role look at the salaries other companies are paying because because oftentimes the numbers online don't reflect the current job market salary because for my role specifically when i was looking online it said the average salary would be around eighty thousand dollars per year i got almost forty thousand dollars more than that don't always believe the numbers that you see online. Maybe an easy rule of thumb is if you want a specific salary, just add 20,000 to it and go from there because the recruiter will meet you in the middle. They will let you know if the number is too high and they'll give you a number anyway, no matter what you say. So personally, I think it's better to highball yourself. Obviously not in a crazy way. You don't have to double it unless you're feeling really frisky. I don't know, go ahead. But personally, I would add maybe 15 or 20,000 to the salary that you are looking for and kind of meet in the middle with your recruiter and see wherever the conversation goes. Never accept your offer right when you get it. Um, typically, they're gonna call you to give you the salary information and time to think it over. Um, I would never accept during that first phone call. Just let them know you wanna think over your opportunities and other potential offers that you are currently on the table for and then get the time frame for when you need to make your decision by. Right, the next thing is killing your interview because obviously even if you have all the credentials a perfect resume you're the exact candidate that they want in terms of experience if you're not able to pass your interview with flying colors then obviously it ends up being for nothing personally i of course use my security plus certification exam objectives guide so comptia actually releases exam objectives it's basically a pdf of all the vocabulary words that you'll receive in the security plus I believe it's a few hundred words. Um, I haven't counted the exact number, but it's about three to 500 words, I believe, or terms and concepts that you may need to know or that you definitely need to know for Security Plus, but you may need to know for your cybersecurity interviews. And I actually also have a cybersecurity interview prep guide that I use to study for my cybersecurity interview prep. So that is linked down in the description if you guys want to take a look. But these two are the main things that I use outside of just practice questions that I searched up on Google because there's a lot of those guides online. Top 
50 questions asked during cybersecurity interviews, top 30 questions for security analyst interviews, things like that. Um, those quick Google searches are kind of nice to kind of fill the gaps of the types of questions that you may that you may get. But those are also very general. And I think that's a hard thing about cybersecurity interviews, the fact that there's so many different concepts and topics, things that you have to study and it's not always known what you'll be what you'll be asked on the interview, especially for a role like a security analyst. Our roles are just very broad. Unless you're going into a role like like a junior network analyst, then you probably can expect that most of your interview questions will be on network security. Um, but for a general security analyst role, it could be anything, anything under the sun, honestly, in terms of foundational cybersecurity concepts. And I would definitely say that is true based on my experience interviewing for cybersecurity roles. So I definitely recommend looking at the Security plus exam objectives. It is a lot of security words to go through, but I do think that it's worth it because it really gives you a guide, uh, an actual path on what to study rather than just googling random security questions that, that may fill the gaps but may not give you that full range of questions to expect. Alright, so hopefully this video was helpful to you guys in terms of helping you prep and get ready to get your first remote job in cybersecurity. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions on this, on my experience, on my interviews, on studying for certification. I do have a video on how I passed my Security Plus certification and that will be linked down in the description if you guys also want to check that out. Outside of all the other videos I've, I've linked in the description, um, but let me know if there's any other video topics that you might want to see from me that may be helpful for you. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12pm and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!